So in the last video, we installed GIOS on a OneDrive system from scratch. And then we took some time and we personalized the desktop. Uh, we then created a work disk for a very simple word processing project using GeoWrite. Uh, we took some time to explore GeoWrite, the calculator desktop accessory, and we even got a chance to copy and paste some data between uh, applications. We added a second disk drive, a 1581. So we covered quite a bit in that video. In this video, we're going to talk a lot about performance. And the first thing we're going to install to achieve performance is a RAM expansion unit. And we're going to install 512K of RAM into our emulated RAM expansion. This should significantly improve the performance of our system. So now that our system is booted, we need to run the configure utility to set it up. I am not editing out any of the disk loading times in this video. This is to really give you an authentic experience of using GIOS on this machine. So here we can see three drives and a RAM expansion. So let's go through each piece individually. The RAM expansion has two options, RAM reboot and DMA for move data. There is no reason to ever turn those off, so I'm not even sure why there are options. Let's talk about drive A or drive 8, that's our 1541. We're going to choose the shadowed 1541 option. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a cache, the entire size of the drive, in the RAM expansion. So the more that we use that drive, the faster disk access for that drive goes. Now, drive B is a 1581 drive, and you'll notice that we don't have the option to shadow the entire disk. I mean, 1581 disks are 800K, which is larger than our expansion, but we do have the option to do what's called directory shadow. And shadow is their word for caching. So instead of caching the entire drive, it's going to cache the directory itself. And that actually alone pr produces quite a bit of uh, performance improvement when you're using the desktop. Now we have a drive C option, a third drive, and we have the option to make this a RAM 1541. So we're going to choose that. What this is going to do is create a fake 1541 drive that is completely in memory. Of course, the downside is when we reboot the computer, we lose all the contents, but it is lightning fast and that's the upside. So let's do a file, save configuration. Okay, and then we're going to quit out of here back to our desktop. Now at first, it's not going to seem any faster than before, but you will see the system become quicker as we use it more, as it starts to cache a lot of the data. So to play around with this, we're going to pull out the back side of disk 3, which is Geospell, and we're going to copy that to our RAM disk. So we're going to select these two files by holding the Commodore key and just tapping each one of them. Now, normally we would tap this and you would think we drop it on a RAM disk and we can't, nothing happens. GIOS has the concept of active drives and that is drives A and B. If you want to access the third drive, you have to swap it in place with one of the active drives. Well, drive B's are 1581. So we can tap on the RAM disk and drop it on top of the 1581. And what it does is it makes the RAM disk an active drive and puts the 1581 aside where we can't interact with it on the desktop. So now we can go back to our GSPL disk and we can copy the dictionary and GSPL to the RAM drive. And now we have reached the maximum number of drives that we can have in GS, which is three. There were actually three RAM expansion units released about the same time. The 1700 and the 1750 for the Commodore 128, which had 128 and 512K RAM, and the 1764 for the Commodore 64, which had 256K RAM. Um, but as I understand it, it looks like you can really use any three of them with the Commodore 64, so you were able to get 512K on the Commodore 64. And I believe the other RAM expansion units were also upgradable. I 
Excellent. Excellent, and that's done. So now we're going to close Geospell, and we're going to put our work disk in. And if you remember, our work disk in our first video contained GeoWrite. Oops, sometimes I click too fast, so we'll do that again. This disk has GeoWrite, has our text document, and has our printer driver. So we're going to spell check one of these two documents. Now we can go to a RAM disk, and now we get to start really feeling the speed effects of the RAM expansion. So I'm going to double click this to launch it. Oops, try that again. And you'll notice it just pops right up. Now with the RAM expansion, we have the ability here to open documents from a different drive. So we can click the drive button and it's going to toggle between the B and the A drive. So now it's looking at the A drive. Clicking the button again, we'll toggle it back to the B disk, which is the RAM disk. So as you can see, the drive button toggles between the two active drives. So we're going to click it again. We're going to go back to the first disk and we're going to open Hello World. And we're going to spell check uh, both pages. So we're going to hit OK. So in GeoWrite, they give you a dictionary. If you create a personal dictionary, what it'll do is it'll spell check against the real dictionary. And if you want to add words to that dictionary, it adds them to your personal dictionary instead. We're just going to choose none. All right. It's read the document. It's counted all the unique words. And now it's going to take each unique word and go through the GeoS dictionary and look for suspect words. All IO is done through the REU. So this is about as fast as the Commodore could possibly spell check a document because there's no disk IO involved. There are ways to make it faster because there are things like super CPUs that can make your C64 faster. All right, so here it's gonna show you uh, the text from our document and the word that it doesn't like. It doesn't like the word basics. And what you can do is you can click find to have it try to find uh, the correct word. And I kind of like the word basic, so I'm just going to uh, accept this word and click do to go to the next one. And there have clearly spelled desktop wrong. So let's do a find and see if we can find desktop spelled correctly in here. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. We're going to type it correct here. We'll hit find again. And desktop is not in our dictionary. Well, we're going to take that word also. <laughs> we're going to hit accept. GUI, we're going to accept that. Uh, impressive. Clearly, this is in a dictionary. Uh, let's see. Impress. There it is. Impressive. Finally, we found one. So we're going to replace it. And now it's on page two. I think we're done with this file. So we're just going to do a file close, and then it's going to write the changes back to disk. So we're going to hit quit. And now we're back at the desktop. So now let's test out the speed of the shadowed 1541. So right off the bat, just clicking on a disk, you could see how much faster it came up. Let's launch GeoWrite. Now, because of the first time I'm launching it, since we've had the RAM expansion turned on, it's going to take the full, I think it's like 11 or 12 seconds to load. So we're going to open our existing document. We're going to go into Hello World. And it takes a few seconds to open. But you can see that navigating the document is quicker. It's not going to the disk constantly to do things. And then if I try to launch the uh, the desktop accessory for calculator, because I haven't launched it yet in this session, it takes a couple seconds to come up. And then I'll close it. But if I launch it a second time, it just comes right up. So let's close that. Now let's do the, the big test. Let's exit GeoWrite and relaunch it to see how much faster it comes up with the RAM expansion and the shadowed 1541 feature. So here we go, double click. And look at that, it's already here. We'll open our document, uh, we'll open Hello World again. And as you can see, not once has it gone to the disk drive, it pulled everything out of RAM. 
So the RAM expansion really does uh, speed up the use of GIOS uh, very impressively. So let's close this disk out. Let's put our 1581 back in position. So let's put our system disk back into the first drive. And then we're going to restart the system. Now what's interesting about the RAM expansion is if you restart and you don't lose power, because remember if you lose power, the RAM expansion memory goes away, you can launch GEOS with a program called RBoot or RAM Boot. And what it's going to do is it's going to launch the desktop and based on what's left in memory from your previous session, it will use to boot quicker. And as you can see, it did come up quite a bit quicker. We're going to try another trick to really speed things up. We're going to install what's called Jiffy DOS ROMs. These are a replacement kernel ROM and a replacement ROM chip for your disk drives, and it increases I.O. in the machine quite a bit. Let's play around with that and see how that impacts GIOS. So we need to configure my emulator to work with Jiffy DOS ROMs. So I'm going to jump into Settings to the ROM section. And first we need to replace our kernel ROM with our legally obtained copy of the Jiffy DOS ROM. We're gonna choose the Jiffy DOS ROM here for the kernel. And you'll see the 664 reboot with a new uh, branded uh, welcome screen here. And then we're gonna to go to the drive ROMs and we're gonna put one on the 1541 too. And that is, oh, that's this one here. And then we'll put one on our 1581, which is uh, this one. And then just to be sure, we'll reboot again. All right, so we're gonna put our system disk in. With Jiffy DOS, you can just press Shift, Run, Stop to load the first thing on a disk. And you can already hear the drive sounds are different. They're more efficient, they're more tighter. I mean, it still takes a couple of seconds to boot up, but it is definitely a bit quicker. And here we are at the desktop already. So Jiffy DOS paired with the REU uh, is letting our Commodore 64 run at almost peak performance. So for example, we can switch our work disk And we're going to launch GeoWrite. And with a combination of Jiffy DOS able to perform that initial load much quicker, and combined with the RAM expansion, we've really got our Commodore 64 GEOS environment turbocharged at this point. And here you can just see how much quicker it is uh, with the Jiffy DOS. And again, we'll go into the calculator. It'll come up a bit quicker. Still a little bit of disk access, of course. But we can close it. And of course, the second time, it'll come off the RAM expansion and it'll open uh, almost instantly. There is a minor issue with Jiffy DOS, though. And that seems to be compatibility. Not all programs work with Jiffy DOS. So I'm going to switch the disk to Geospell. And we're going to try to launch Geospell. And unfortunately, Geospell has some kind of incompatibility with Jiffy DOS. So when I double click this, it's going to crash. So it's gonna mostly load, and right about here, we get a system error of some sort. System error near 3573. It is the only application that I've run into so far that does not work with Jiffy DOS, but it is enough to get me a little concerned that 
uh, it may not work correctly with everything. And for the things that it doesn't work correctly for, is it going to cause disk corruption? I'm not sure. But we're going to leave it enabled for the rest of the video because it's just so fast. At this point, we're going to do one more major upgrade. We're going to swap out our cached RAM expansion unit drive for hard disk. This is going to be cool. We have to make one little change before we put our hard disk into the system. So let's put our system disk back in. Shift, this, shift run stop to load it. We need to disable the RAM disk. If you remember, GIOS 2.0 has a limit of three drives. Well, right now we've got a 1541 configured, a 1581 configured, and a RAM disk. So in preparation to install the hard drive, we do have to take the RAM disk offline. And we're gonna do that by jumping into the config program once the desktop is loaded. This is what a real Jiffy DOS ROM looks like. This actually replaces the kernel ROM inside your Commodore 64. You would also need to replace a chip inside your disk drive. All right, so we're gonna turn this to no drive. We're going to save, and then we're going to quit out of here. All right, let's set up a hard disk. So at this point, I've configured the hard drive. I've put a few GIOS compatible partitions on it. And now we're gonna configure it in GIOS. What you have to do though, however, to configure it is you have to have the hard disk unattached and powered down, and you have to load up your system disk. I went a step further and just have just drive eight, which is the 1541T. We have to make some serious changes to our system boot disk for the hard disk to work. If you had booted the system disk with the hard disk attached, it would have crashed right here as the desktop came up. The first change we need to make is put a new version of configure on our system disk. So the first thing we need to do is trash our configure on our boot disk. Now this is kind of scary, so we want to hope that this works. Now you'll notice if you try to trash it, it's going to tell you the operation request may not be performed on a GS boot disk. So to make a serious change like this, you need to bring it out to the border area and then bring it into the uh, trash can. And now the config file is trashed. So at the moment, our system disk is in pretty scary shape. So we're going to close it. And we're going to attach the disk that came with the hard disk called GIOS Utils. So we're going to open this up. And we actually need two files to bring over to our system disk. We need our new copy of configure. And you'll notice it's version 2.1, so it's, uh, I suppose, one better. And then we're going to want to grab this other program here called HD Time. So we're going to copy this down here. And now we're going to close this disk out. And if you remember from the first video, copying files between disks in a OneDrive system uh, is a process that requires some patience. But it will pay off in this case. All right, so we're going to bring a configure over first. That's a relatively large program. So it's going to take a few minutes here. So we're going to switch back to the GIOS disk. I'm going to press OK. It's going to read that configure file, hopefully all of it into memory, so we don't have to make too many passes with the disks here. Okay, we're going to put the system disk back in. And now it's going to write it to the system disk. I did configure first, mainly because um, having a system disk that might not boot, it's kind of terrifying. Now we're going to have to put the CMD disk back in in a moment to copy over the HD time application. Oh. 
All right, so now we're going to copy HD time over. And once again, we're going to put the other disk in. This file is much shorter, so this should go a lot quicker. All right, I'm going to put our system disk back in. Oops. Cool, our system boot disk is ready for the hard drive. So we're gonna close this disk out. We're gonna go into our emulator here and turn the hard drive on. And I have a CMD emulated hard disk. So we're gonna press close. I'm gonna attach the hard disk image to drive nine. And then we're gonna reboot. And now we're gonna launch Geos on our new disk. So the process of setting up the CMD hard disk is somewhat involved. If this is something you'd like to do on your own, definitely check out my video on how to do this. It's linked in the description of this video. So once we get the desktop back up here, hopefully in a moment or two, we need to run the configure program to reconfigure the REU and how it interacts with our drives. There we go. The first exciting thing to notice is that our real time clock is now synced to the hard drive time clock. All right, so let's launch configure. This new configuration is just one 1541 and the hard disk. I didn't really feel a need to keep the 1581 around. So we're gonna turn shadowing back on on drive A because that was just such a massive performance improvement. And we're gonna turn on directory shadowing on drive B. You'll notice that it recognizes it as a 1581. The CMD hard disk has to emulate 1581 disk drives in order to work with GIOS. And we're gonna turn our RAM disk back on because that was just really, really cool. All right, so we're gonna save this. We're gonna exit out. And now we should have a really super snappy system. Of course, I just said that as it takes a bit of time to load our desktop back up. So if we go to the hard disk here, it's gonna tell us it's not a GS disk, so we're gonna convert it. Okay, and we're gonna to wanna to put a copy of desktop on that drive. So we don't have to constantly go for the system disk. Normally you would also bring over the print driver, but we're just gonna skip that this time to move things along. All right, let's close the system disk out. Let's put some applications on our hard disk to play around with. So we're gonna to switch to the applications disk that comes with GS. And you'll see from the first video, these icons are still in the side area. A small annoyance with desktop. I wish there was a button that you could click that would just move everything back to where they came from. Uh, let's take GeoPaint and GeoWrite and put a copy on our hard disk here. And I know I've said this quite a few times before. I'm leaving all of the edit and copy times in unedited just so we can truly see the experience of using GIOS on authentic C64 hardware, or in this case, emulated authentic C64 hardware. Okay, let's jump to page two. Okay, let's take Photo Manager and put that on our hard disk here. And I think that's enough to play with from the application disk. And we're gonna go back to the CMD 
GS Utilities Disk for a moment, because there's one more file we want to bring over. And that is this Quick Move 64 application. So we're going to copy that to the hard disk. Again, as you can see, as we're switching disks that have left icons in a side area, the side area gets a little bit cluttered and kind of confusing. So we're going to bring some of these back up here to get that area just a little bit cleaned up. Okay, let's go to the hard disk. Now let's give our new turbocharged GS environment a test spin. Let's run GeoPaint. We're going to create a new picture. I'm going to call it Smiley. So let me embarrass myself with my uh, not so amazing art skills. In modern user interfaces, you click, you drag, and then you let go to draw a shape. In GIS, you click, then you move the mouse and you'll see it re-render the shape, and then you click again to select it. I'll do it in a closed circle so I can make some eyes here. <laughs> this is not looking too good so far. And then we'll use our paintbrush here to try to draw um, a smile of some sort. Oof. Oof, I don't think I'm getting into art school anytime soon. All right, so we're going to copy a region of this picture. Oops, I'm going to grab the selection tool here. Click, draw a box around the part we want to grab. Click that. And then we're going to copy this to a scrap. And then we're going to go into the photo manager. This is a desktop accessory we've not played around with. This is similar to the text manager. Well, we can keep scrapbooks. So we're going to create a new photo album. I love how they call them photos. I'm pretty sure you couldn't really get a good high-res photo into GIS. Of course, now that I've said that, someone will prove me wrong quite quickly. Uh, we'll call this um, clip art. I think it's two words. Then we're going to edit paste from the scrap that's on the disk. This is a tool to manage your clip art for use in other applications and projects that you're working on. Okay, let's close this out. Now we're already seeing just from using this, just, everything just is so much quicker using the hard disk and Jeffy Donis. All right, so let's close out of here. All right, and then let's pop into GeoWrite. create a new document here. We'll call this um, Hello World 2. Our second try at Hello World. This new configuration of my Commodore 64 is really sweet. The combination of Jiffy DOS and a CMD hard disk makes me feel and then we can paste our little smiley picture right into our document cool i think that's happy but well, kind of a scary looking smiley face but we'll go with it it is just so much faster now excellent so we're able to integrate with applications out much quickly and easier with the speed of Jiffy DOS and the hard disk. It's just really, really nice. So we're going to quit out of this. So we do have a hard disk with several Geos blank 1581 disks waiting for us to use. We use the quick move program to switch between them and manage them. So we're going to launch this. And this program is really neat. You get a visual representation of the hard disk at the bottom. It's telling us that we're currently using the GEOS 1 partition. We can open another partition with this. There are three partitions on the drive. These two are basically blank disks at this point. So let's click the second one. We'll try to open it. And it wants to know if we want to convert this to a GEOS partition. And we'll say yes. 
Okay, and now we want to go back to the other partition. So we're going to cancel out of here. We'll open partition. We'll go to partition one. So aside from changing partitions, you can also copy files between them really quickly. So if I was going to take uh, maybe just GeoWrite and a few other pieces and move them to my second partition to create another work disk, you can do that pretty easily with this tool. So you click the file you want, you press copy, and it selects it. The selection UI is not great because you really can't see what you picked, but it works. So we can grab that. We can grab, say, um, our smiley picture. Uh, maybe we'll grab, uh, what else is on here? Oh, I guess we'll grab our clip art library. You click copy to, and then you choose the target partition. We hit open, and it's going to copy those files in between them. So you can really quickly create work disks by copying between the partitions on your hard disk. Now you can have, oh, I think it's like 253 or 254 partitions. So you can really emulate just a ginormous stack of three and a half inch floppies with this. And they obviously work really quickly. Cool, so we're gonna leave that second partition here. And then when we exit this program, um, the desktop, oh, we've got, we didn't put a desktop on here. So we gotta throw our system disk back in into the first drive. So we'll do that real quick. That's what I get for forgetting to copy the desktop over to the new partition. And here we go, the second partition. Once I reboot the machine, however, it's gonna reset back to the default partition. So if you're working on a new project, you're going to want to set that as a default petition using the HD tools program that comes with the hard drive. So now we have a supercharged C64 GIOS environment running in a 512K REU, a single 1541 disk drive, a 500 meg hard drive that are performance boosted with Jiffy DOS ROMs. This was a really fun video to create. and I've learned a ton about GIOS in a process. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching these videos. I have so much fun making these. And knowing that there are people out there that enjoy it just inspires me to make more. The next video in this series is going to cover something I didn't even know was possible to do in GIOS and is inspired by a comment on our previous video. I cannot wait to show it to you. It is, like, in my mind, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Um, hopefully, I'll see you guys then. Take care.